This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Hi, Clyde. So, uh, welcome to Talk of Asian Marketing, and uh, we're here today to look visit at the fish market. To visit the fish market. So. I think this is really nice. You know, in fact, where I stay in Tainan, just uh, we've got a really nice park that's about five minutes walk away from my house, and it's just on the edge of the harbour area. And running around the edge of the harbour area, on the opposite side from the park, you can just sit down, you can watch it, and it's really interesting because about 12 o'clock, it starts to get busy because oh. all the ships are coming back in. And it's probably like at night. At night, yeah. So the lights are getting on. It's just starting to get a bit of momentum. Mm. What do we see in there? We see people arriving, the trucks with the ice, right. the boxes coming in, and then the ships start coming in. So about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, all the ships are coming in, and it's really super exciting to get in there. And you see fishes, literally... I've no idea on fish names, I have to say. I'm very, very, very uh, sort of... Um, Ignorant when it comes to fish. Absolutely. But little ones, um, come in great big ones, you know? So, absolutely every description, thin ones, fat ones, every name you can imagine in there. Yeah. I have to say, in the market that's opposite or close by my place, it's a lot of the wholesales, the restaurateurs that are going in. Right, and you see right. people buying, you know, as I say. In That's bulk. what's in our video t- today, too. The same yeah. thing. It's a lot of the buyers that are buying from restaurants. So they're coming in very early. Oh. I think this was like five or six. Our crew went out there to oh, film. Probably sense. earlier than that. And they were getting a lot of those buyers coming in. Yeah. You really see people coming in and uh, buying by the uh, container. Yeah, I mean, right. they, they bring in the big styrofoam boxes. We see this in the film. Push them around. Push right. them around. They load it up with ice to keep it nice and fresh. And so literally that's going to be served the next day. They're buying day by day. Well, that day, that day. If they're doing yeah. it early in the morning, this is for that day supply of, exactly, of the restaurant. Yeah. There's certainly no intention to keep it. And I think another shot that's nice to see in the video is the fish heads. Fish heads. Uh, because I, fish uh, heads. my fish heads. wife's friend, in fact, had uh, lived in the UK for some time. And do you know what she did? No, what? Uh, went round to the fishmonger. And she noticed this guy would just hack off the head, mm. throw it away. Yeah. And she was so happy because she said to this guy, please, can you keep the fish heads? And you yeah. used to go there and yeah. get it was 17, 18 fish heads for free. For and free? she was totally over the for moon, free. totally for free. And, of course, here, uh, not people, for free. <laughs> certainly not for free. And people will often tell you that's the best bit of the fish because yeah. you get the really tender parts yeah. around the, uh, the, the jaw muscles. So here we see... Um, this element of the uh, people coming into the wet market. Right, we've got the buyers, but we also have some families coming in. Yeah. And that was really interesting. Our crew was able, able to capture that. And I love the way they just line up and say, you know, that this is the this yeah. is the person it's judging beautiful. it, this is the person who's paying for it, this is the person who's going to actually use it to cook, these are the people going to eat it. Yeah. And that's classic marketing textbook stuff, you know, the separation of buyer, payer, user, all these things. Which, of course, in this day, as they show, it's like father it's the mother yeah. it's the uh, daughter in there domestic helper domestic helper and that theme as well comes yeah. through that we've talked about in our other shows young kid and what's the young kid learning right learning how about freshness do, about freshness right. and how do you know about freshness you get in you poke it you right. touch it you right. have a really good look at it exactly. so she's getting socialized in there as well yeah i so. love to see that socialization taking place and that, that comes across across real clearly on the other hand, we have a, a shot in the video where, keep your eyes open, there's a guy looking to get some, I think it might be fish heads, it's in the oh, fish head section, so yeah. and he just won't touch them. He hands the bag over, he kind of, you know, slowly wakes his way over yeah. and uh, touches the bag. But he did go into the fish market to get it, because you know that's the freshest but place you can know, get it. You know, I, I, I swear I know what's happened there. What's happened? He's been sent by his wife to get the <laughs> fish. <laughs> because she wants fresh fish, but she for wants some reason she can't get it. So you can see that he's doing what he needs to do, but he's not going to get anywhere near the fish. Ah, because he's either. typical, to go back to the earlier segment, yeah. he's basically paying 
but yeah. not select right. it. So yeah. he's I, not I, cooking it. He's not selecting it. He's just been told to go. That sounds that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I think that kind of fits with, uh, with this section. So. All right, so we're going to be ten minutes in the fish market. That's right. Great. Today, we are going to look at how consumer perception influences consumers' purchasing behavior in Jurong Fishery Port. And I believe most of you have not been here before, so let's embark on an interesting journey. Guess what time is it? It's 2 a.m. in the morning! We shall begin by introducing the background on the operational process of how Jurong Fishery Port functions. This is the overall view of the physical environment that influences consumers' behaviour, such as the way the seafood are displayed or how closely the stalls are arranged, which cultivates a highly competitive environment. This in turn creates a bustling, fast-paced atmosphere. Check out the fishes, they are actually still alive. If you take a closer look, you can still see them moving. There are also different variety of seafoods available for consumers to choose from. You can almost find all kinds of seafood around our region here. Look, my favourite stingray! Before selling, the fish dealers make sure the fishes are cleaned. This shows the cleaning process of the various fishes. It involves scaling, cleaning, washing and sorting of the fishes. Some dealers go the extra mile to help cut the seafood for consumers' convenience. People who come to Jurong Fishery Port will usually buy in large quantities. So how do they transport their purchases around? Let's have a look. Consumers will create their own customized mode of transport. For example, look at this uncle in checkered shirt. This is a self made trolley. This tells us that consumers purchased there will usually need to bring their own trolleys so that their shopping experience can be less tedious. Hence, a recommendation from us is Jurong Fishery Port should consider providing trolleys for consumers' convenience. From what we have learned, Coercive power is about influencing a person by social or physical intimidation. From here, we can see a demonstration from a store manager using coercive power. The man in blue is the store manager. He approaches a customer and puts his arm over the customer's shoulder. A gesture in building a relationship with the customer. This resulted in a negative consumer behaviour in which the customer walked away. To further support our point, let's take a look at the second attempt by the same manager on a different customer. This time, the manager held the customer's hand. Once again, the customer left without purchasing. Now we are going to take a look at the buying behaviour of a fishmonger. I would like to bring your attention to the left hand side of the screen. You can notice a fishmonger with large empty containers and simply unloading the fishes into the containers without choosing. This is an example of street rebuy and habitual decision process. It is part of their daily routine in replenishing stocks which explains the fishmonger's low involvement in purchasing. Look at these two fishmongers. They simply pick and throw the fishes into the white container. In contrast to fishmongers who visit Jurong Fishery Port daily, families who visit the port to buy seafood or fish treat it like a recreational bonding activity. 
there is no emotional involvement during the whole purchasing experience. In this case, you can see that an entire family is present. There is the mother who makes the decision on what fish to buy, the father who is probably the one paying, the daughter and a domestic helper. To the daughter, it will be like an educational treat where the parents are able to show her on how they go about purchasing fish. The daughter first observes how her mother picks and chews a fresh fish. She then retains this behaviour in her memory and converts this information into action. This example depicts the modelling process. This scene shows a gentleman purchasing a fish without using his sense of touch. Unlike the older generation, the young usually do not like the idea of getting their hands dirty. Let's look at how this gentleman purchased a fish head. As you can see, this gentleman leaves the choosing of the fish he wanted to the seller. From this, we can observe the gentleman having a perception that the seller is more knowledgeable in this area. At the end of the whole transaction, the gentleman still did not have the intention of touching the fish. Our senses help us decide which products appeal to us in order to make purchasing decisions. In this context, the three main sensory stimuli that consumers use are vision, touch and smell. In contrast to the young gentleman mentioned earlier, this lady depends on her vision and haptic sense to determine which fish to buy. Her judgment about the freshness of the fish is based on what she perceives when she touches it. Let's have a look. In this scenario, this consumer is using his sense of smell to choose the fish. The normal operating hours of a supermarket is 8 a.m. For wet market is 6 a.m. and for Jurong Fishery Port is 2 a.m. So here's a question we would like to pose to the audience. Why are consumers motivated to wake up in the wee hours to go all the way to Jurong Fishery Port? Is it because of the freshness of the seafood? Is it because of the low price? Or is it because of the lively atmosphere? What do you think? Fish market, you know, I love to eat fish. So do I. It's I'm not good spot. at fishing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. and it's very interesting because I really love the way we get the different groups and what they're thinking of when they're buying. So, you know, your resellers, uh -huh. your restaurant, restaurant tees, restaurant tours, right? They're coming in to buy for the restaurant. Your family's even coming in. Absolutely. Really marvelous setup there. So I think our crew did a really good job to go out there and capture it. You saw the organization of the markets. You know, it's a little bit chaotic. I'm not sure about the one in Tainan, but in Singapore, everything's more organized. Yes, very, very, very similar actually. I think the attributes that we see for the market are there. You know, that just a bit of corrugated roof, mm -hmm. fairly simple roof, mm -hmm. open all the way around. And in this case, both trucks can get in, and people in, in the Tainan one, right. it's right up close by the harbour, so the boat's getting in, and it's directly offloaded. So again, right. real image of the freshness going on there. So easy access, 
air can blow through, the trucks with the uh, ice can get in and out. And you've been there so buying, buying supplies before? Yeah, we've gone and bought some fish before. But I have to say, two, three o'clock in the morning, yeah. you know, it's one yeah, for it's the tough. weekend, not yeah. for the week. It's yeah. surprising. I mean, you really do get a lot of individual consumers going down and visiting these. We have the fish market in Taichung also. And yeah, you get a lot of people doing that. And of course, that's the guaranteed way to get your best supplies. It is. And I, that's, you know... Food, food, food. I mean, there's, there's, I can't think of a more central concept in Chinese culture that's consistent as food. And, and we're a great benefit to us. You know, we get really good food. And I, I, think, I think, as you say, core is food, and also core is fresh food. Fresh food, yeah. Not and just any kind of food. Just right. can't yeah. emphasize that right. enough. But right. it's, uh, and this just captures the essence of caught now, eat as the next right. step. There's right. nothing, nothing in really in between there. And right. it's designed to be straight from basically the ship to the restaurant right. to the consumer's or plate. In this, in this case, a, a lot of these guys would be going off to the wet markets. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Everyone gets up early. Even in a smaller restaurant, they'll start the day at four or maybe a little bit earlier to yeah. get out to exactly these places, right. the wet market, to go and get things like the fish. And so we see people in there shopping for that. And, exactly. of course, this, like our man, He's obviously been sent probably by his wife to get the fresh fish for maybe breakfast or later in the day. Exactly. Okay, our next video next week, we're going to be in Singapore again. Yeah. And this time we have something a little bit unusual. We're talking trash. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave it at that. We're talking trash. So come back next week to learn more about trash. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.